and welcome back to Keeping Up With The Windsors. My name is Michelle and today's video is going to be giving the review of episode two of Archetypes with Mariah Carey. I'm so excited to talk about this one. If you love the royal family as much as I do, then hit that subscribe button and join the royal community here on YouTube. Let's get to it. So today I'm talking about episode two, which is the duality of diva. Now, Megan interviewed Mariah Carey, she interviewed Amanda Seals, and also Dr. Mashinka Farrens Hakopian. And it was a very interesting episode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this up into what I really loved, the pros, and what I wasn't a massive fan of. Okay, let's get started with the positives. I absolutely love Mariah Carey. I have to say that straight away. I know a lot of things about her. When I heard that Megan was gonna be interviewing Mariah, I was so excited and Mariah did not disappoint. The reason why is because I loved the topic. I love the topic that they were talking about. Diva is quite an interesting word, isn't it? Being a diehard fan of Mariah, I know for a fact that her mum was an opera singer and that word is connected to the, you know, the prima donna, the operatic soprano. So it was very fitting, I think, to have Mariah on as a guest. I loved the conversation that Megan and Mariah had, especially when it moved into their living experiences of being of mixed race. Megan brought up Marie's and pink hair lotion to Mariah and Mariah just was like, I can't believe you just said Marie's. I loved it. I just thought it was wonderful that they were able to connect on such a level. And then they went back to Diva and I just thought, oh, I kind of wanted to listen a bit more uh, into like more of their lived experience rather than having more of a formulaic um, connection to the word diva. But then I also know the last episode, episode one, I'll pop a card up here somewhere, I actually didn't like that about Ambition and Serena where I think they went off kilter. So maybe episode three, they'll just get it perfect. But right now it's a little bit too little <laughs> of off the topic and before it was a bit too much. I actually thought Megan loosened up and I, I thought as well that she allowed her guest to have just a, a, a really good back and forth with the conversation. Oh, I tell you a massive positive is they had um, Cha Cha and Muttley. Um, <laughs> that's uh, Mariah's dogs, by the way. And I just feel like they should have had a picture. They should have had a picture and they should have released it because I'm there for the dogs. Megan loves dogs, Mariah loves dogs, I love dogs. And let us be a part of the podcast. I don't know why it's not a video podcast anyway. It's on Spotify, Joe Rogan does it, why not Megan? Do you know what I found really interesting is when we were talking about the opera singer Leah Time Price and they said that she had a 42 minute standing ovation. Like, it just blew my mind. I was on the train listening to this thinking, 42 minutes. I remember giving somebody, I can't even remember who it was now, about an eight minutes standing ovation and that was ages. Can you imagine doing that for 42 minutes? How amazing must Leah Time Price be? She must be incredible. So let's get to the nitty gritty of what this podcast is actually talking about. And it didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, which is just talking about the word diva and just seeing how it shows up for Mariah in her everyday life. We actually saw a little altercation. Megan got triggered by the word diva when Mariah actually said, you give us some diva moments, Megan. And she said, oh, you know, how, how do, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, um, how, how do I do that? And she said, you know, with the costumes you wear and the glamour and the way your body language is. Afterwards, after this conversation had happened, Megan said during the narration, you know, that she she felt she felt sweaty and really thought about what Mariah said. You know, Mariah um, was one of her people that she looked up to as a mixed race woman on television, and to have her think of her thinking of Megan as a as a diva was like a really big thing for her. You know, Megan said she must have seen something for her to believe that. But when she realised, and let me tell you something, Mariah's emotional intelligence is off the charts. It was expert because she realized that she'd hurt Megan's feelings. And so she kept it on her to allow it to, uh, you know, to regulate. She was saying, you know, no, to me, Diva is about, you know, 
people like Sophia Loren and Marilyn Monroe and showing up in these diva moments and being glamorous and you know connecting that word of glamour to diva wasn't meant as a slight, it wasn't meant as a dig, it was meant as an endearment. It was like yes, you are a diva too. I think Megan had in her head the diva word and that it was negative but actually Mariah had claimed it and owned it and said, you know what, you're gonna call me diva, but I've, came, I've come from nothing. I'm gonna wear what I want. I'm gonna show up with my jewels and, and um, things that I worked hard for to wear. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be unapologetic about it. And that is, if that's a diva, then I'm taking it. That's what I'm gonna have. And so for Mariah, owning that label was a sign of so much strength and courage. Um, and she was taking it back. Whereas for Megan to have that word diva connected to her just was like the biggest, I don't want to say insult. I don't think she felt insulted by it. I think she felt um, like maybe her ego was bruised. I'm not sure. But it was, it was a very interesting thing. And I'm just really happy that Megan kept that in because she did get slated a little bit in the media for it. But that vulnerable part actually shows her whole premise of archetypes or stereotypes. Less, you know, some of the things she's talking about is a stereotype, it's not an archetype. The whole premise of the podcast is to see why people are using those words as negatives. But actually, I think what she's realised is you can actually have both things or three meanings, or four meanings to a word, or ten meanings, you get my drift, and it'd be okay. <laughs> Megan mentioned the honey video, where Mariah's, you know, trapped by, like, these mafia-type people, the firm, and then she breaks free, and then she just, like, gets on this, um, you know, this boat, and she goes to the uh, island, and she's with her man and her dogs, Harry and the kids and the dogs, and I'm just like, there's so much connection to Megan's story and to this honey video. I can't look at honey video the same way anymore. So um, yeah, I could see that it was subtly hinting to Megan's experience with leaving the royal family versus, um, you know, what, what Mariah went through and finding both of their voices. Maybe I'm just reading into that. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Did you think the same thing when they were talking about the honey video? Honey video, I just love that song anyway. Anyway, right, okay, moving on. I'll talk about Mariah all day. I know I will. <laughs> I love her. Okay, let's move on to the next point. One negative for me is Megan is trying to appeal to like the everyday woman. We have to understand that Meghan is a duchess, she has married a prince, and she lives in a 14 bedroom mansion. She is not like everybody else. So yes, she may have shown up to Mariah's with a dress that's got dog hair on it, and then compared herself or contrasted herself to Mariah, who's in this silk gown with jewels on. Personally, I just, I'm just over it. I'm just over this idea that Megan's like everyone. She's not. She's not like everyone. You're in the 1%. You're not the 99%. So it's not that you don't understand. It's that you're no longer there. I don't want you to be like everyone. I'm listening to this because I want to know what it's like for, for you to live in your world now. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm just not vibing with that at all. But I'm still confused about archetypes. I'm not quite sure what Megan is trying to do with the whole premise of it. I was really excited to start off with. I thought it was going to be something that would have like ebbs and flows, but it seems to me like it's, they've got an idea of what they want and they're just bringing people in that fit that narrative. So that's it, that's my review of Megan's episode two of Archetypes. I think it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens in the next episodes and how I'm going to feel listening to them because I really liked Serena's, um, you know, episode one, Ambition with Serena, really loved that episode. And I really loved episode two, but I think it was more to do with the fact that I love Mariah. She's very true to herself, she's very authentic, and she she stood up for herself, you know, with this word diva. So, 
she wasn't having any of the narrative Megan was giving, which for me just, I don't know, it just brought a bit of realness to it. Let me know what you think. Have you been listening to Archetypes? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be reviewing every episode of Archetypes coming up, so make sure you're subscribed. And if you love the royal family as much as I do, then make sure you hit that notification bell as well. If you want to support the channel, you can. There's a link in the description for Kofi, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.